right, hello wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And this is, um, well, part of the show that, uh, well, we, we are obliged to do for our suppliers that stop in and taste us on wine. We can't buy everything that we taste, even if it's fantastic, like uh, this lineup from Savor the Wine, new small company. And uh, it just goes to show you, man, great things can come in small packages. Everything these girls have is very good. And uh, these Colterenzio wines are from the Vigna del Dolomiti, so the northern uh, Friuli regions there up in the mountains next to Austria. And uh, this is part of the classic range they make here. And these guys make four different tiers. This is a clone of Moscato, a bit of a peppery note to that. Uh, they are co-op. They've got 300 hectares of vines, 300 members. And, um, you know, usually the co-ops don't produce outstanding wines but these wines all very good and uh, a bit of that peppery spice and uh on the nose there as well i guess that's the uh, the moscato Florida moscato is what it's known for a hint a nice hint of floral perfume also which is what i know moscato for that apple and pear fruit and a very fresh wine on the palate nice briny minerally notes to the finish the lemon zest and nice floral quality a nice dry style of moscato something you don't find very often, very good juice at 1875, a great little value. And then the Weisbergunder, Pinot Bianco. It's 100% varietal, all stainless, left on a lease for a few months to get a little richness there. This wine's got a very clean bouquet, green melon, pear, kind of lemon blossom notes. Really nice crisp wine on the tongue with that apple and pear fruit and a nice savoriness to the finish. Leaves the tongue salivating for food. Very good juice at 1650, a drier style of Pinot Bianco. All right, the Pinot Nero, and this is uh, an area known for Pinot Nero here in the Alto Adige. They call it Blaubergunder. That's why he sees no oak, a really pretty bouquet of red cherry and strawberry-like fruit with a hint of spice, earth, and really nice light bouquet of aromas. And uh, one of the things we love about Pinot Noir, that silky smooth texture on the tongue, a nice kind of salty briny note, though, to this wine. Red cherry and strawberry fruit, light floral notes there, a very good little Pinot Nero, 2250, more savory style. And then the Blauburgunder from St. Daniel, Reserva. This is a single vineyard wine. They only make 20,000 bottles here. Reserva means that you must age for two years here. Um, or they age 12 to 14 months in oak and a year in a bottle. Anyways, the Italians have got rules. You know, not like in this country. You call something Reserva, it's just however much you could sell at a higher price. This wine is $33. And a very similar bouquet to the first Pinot Noir, but maybe a little bit more spice, a little bit more richness on the tongue, and that same minerality. Lovely, silky, smooth tannins, nice exotic spices on the finish. Excellent juice at $33.50. So it's a step up. And then the La Grine, which is a, uh, this is a, one of the, the unique varietals to this region. And uh, this wine sees no oak, red rock soils, a very specific part of this region. The varietal the varietal is very good on these type of soils. A very unique bouquet here, dark and red berry fruit, wild flowers, herbs, but that savage note you get, a little wild animal character. Nice juicy fruit on the tongue, a good amount of the, both red and berry fruit showing here, those wild herbs and spices and fine tannins, nice freshness, an excellent little example of this Lagrine varietal. At $19.50, wow. Very unique stuff here. This Lagrine Sigus Mundus with Cornell, which is um, uh, this is their top level Lagrine at fifty dollars a bottle. Ooh, a little bit expensive. They do use some French oak though, and uh, Corelli is the name of their top line. And um, this vineyard's 40 years old, so you get a little age here. 10,000 bottles is all they make of this wine. Very exotic bouquet here, that dry floral herbal note, really amplify the exotic spices, dark earth, really rich blackberry fruit, violet, that savage, really lovely concentration and richness here on the nose. A big and chewy wine on the tongue with a good bit of that wild nature to this varietal, that herbs and flowers and a host of spice on the finish, along with some tannins here. Wow, this wine's pretty big. This should last five, seven, ten years easily in your cellar at 51 bucks. And Excellent example of top level to grind. That's what we had to drink with our friends from Savor the Vine. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.